Whoa, 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 what? Did you see that? With a mighty roar, the integrated Starship rocket soared toward space today from SpaceX's Seaside Starbase facility at Boca Chica Beach here on South Texas's Gulf Coast at 8 a.m. EDT. The launch went beautifully than ever before. The fire of the engines matching the orange glow of the sunrise in South Texas. Starship launches off the pad under the power of all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy Booster. SpaceX also shared on X after the launch. The spaceship soared over the Gulf Coast with all 33 engines in the rocket booster pulsing. High in the sky, the vehicles separated seamlessly through a technique that SpaceX debuted during this flight and employees let out wild cheers. The super heavy booster appeared to perform normally during its ascent without any obvious failures of its Raptor engines, unlike the first flight in April where several Raptors shut down. Starship then ignited its six engines and separated from the booster about two minutes and 45 seconds after liftoff, testing a new hot staging technique where engine ignition takes place before stage separation to improve performance. Super Heavy then planned to perform a boost back maneuver to prepare for a splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. However, at about 3 minutes and 30 seconds after liftoff, the booster broke apart in what SpaceX called a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. The cause for the breakup was not immediately clear, although SpaceX hosts of its launch webcast noted that one purpose for the flight was to test how the booster could manage the stresses from the hot staging. We're going to take that data and improve the hot staging sequence and probably improve the hardware itself for the next flight," SpaceX quality engineering manager Kate Tice said during the live webcast. SpaceX had hoped to soft land the Super Heavy in the Gulf of Mexico to test re-entry and landing processes. The Starship continued to ascend, with a planned engine cutoff eight and a half minutes after liftoff. However, near the end of the burn contact with the vehicle was lost. At the time of the loss of telemetry, Starship was at an altitude of 148 kilometers and going more than 24,000 kilometers per hour, close to orbital velocity. We have lost the data from the second stage. What we do believe right now is that the automated flight termination system on the second stage appears to have triggered very late in the burn, John Innsbrucker. SpaceX principal integration engineer, said on the company's webcast, We think we may have lost the second stage, John Innsbrucker said. The automated flight termination system on Starship was activated very late in the burn, but did not indicate why. The flight termination system is a standard safety feature in rockets, as it destroys the vehicle if a problem arises or it flies off course. On SpaceX's webcast, Starship appears to have been detonated at an altitude of about 148 kilometers, or about 485,000 feet. That is a little under half the altitude at which the International Space Station orbits the Earth. After reaching space, Starship was planned to fly most of the way around the Earth before re-entering the atmosphere and splashing down off the coast of Kauai, Hawaii. An incredibly successful day, even though we did have a rapid, unscheduled disassembly both of the Super Heavy booster and the ship, SpaceX quality engineering manager Kate Tice said on the webcast. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk also expressed, Congratulations, SpaceX team. The company tweeted, Congratulations to the entire SpaceX team on an exciting second integrated flight test of Starship. Starship successfully lifted off under the power of all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster and made it through stage separation. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson congratulated the company for making progress on today's flight test. Spaceflight is a bold adventure demanding a can-do spirit and daring innovation. Today's test is an opportunity to learn, then fly again, Nelson said in a social media post. Indeed, an explosion is not too strange for SpaceX. The company has been known to embrace fiery mishaps during the rocket development process. This was the second test flight for the fully integrated Starship, which consists of the super-heavy first-stage booster and Starship upper-stage spacecraft. 
The first liftoff, which occurred on April 20th of this year, did not go as well as this one did. April's Starship launch ended with a self-destruct command about four minutes into flight, turning the tumbling rocket into a smoldering fireball. SpaceX maintains that such accidents are the quickest and most efficient way of gathering data, an approach that sets the company apart from its close partner, NASA, which prefers slow, methodical testing over dramatic flare-ups. They began building the first stainless steel prototype of Starship, known as Starhopper in Texas, where it successfully launched on a minute, long, low-altitude test flight known as a HOP in August 2019. A series of suborbital test flights were designed to stress systems and components to inform the production of larger prototypes. In December 2020, the much larger Starship Serial No. 8 prototype was the first to successfully launch from Starbase. After liftoff, it sailed to a high-altitude suborbital apogee and appeared to hover momentarily. Then, it turned around for a belly-flop descent back to Earth. Though it exploded just short of its landing pad, all of SpaceX's core test objectives for that flight were achieved. In February 2021, the Starship Serial No. 9 prototype took flight. The 165-foot vehicle launched on a brief test and automatically throttled down its Raptor engines at about 33,000 feet. It then performed the belly flop using adjustable fins to establish a trajectory back toward the launch site. Though the test achieved SpaceX's primary objective, SN9 failed to fully flip from belly down to an upright position, causing it to explode on impact. SpaceX's third high-altitude Starship flight in March 2021 saw Starship Serial No. 10 successfully complete all objectives and execute the first landing of the next-generation vehicle. But minutes after sticking the landing, the spacecraft unexpectedly exploded. Starship Serial No. 15 was the first to launch, land, and remain intact. In May 2021, SN-15 took off from a concrete pad and ascended to an altitude of 10 kilometers, or 33,000 feet, before using its body as an air brake to descend back to the launch site. Just before touchdown, it rapidly flipped around and gently landed under the power of two Raptor engines, a first for the program. After all, Musk's reason for efforting Starship and Super Heavy hinges on his belief that humanity needs to become a multi-planetary spacefaring species sooner rather than later. With a test like today, success comes from what we learn, and today's test will help us improve Starship's reliability as SpaceX seeks to make life multi-planetary. Musk sees Starship as the vehicle that will help SpaceX fulfill its vision of putting human boots on Mars. He ultimately wants hundreds of people traveling to the red planet in each Starship. SpaceX also has awards valued at $4 billion from NASA to develop a lunar lander version of Starship for the Artemis Lunar Exploration Campaign, including crewed landings on the moon for the Artemis 3 and 4 missions. NASA officials said at a November 17th meeting of an advisory committee that they will be closely watching the launch. They noted, though, that a single lunar lander mission will take in the high teens of launches of Starship Super Heavy for the lander itself as well as to deliver propellants to a depot in Earth orbit that will fuel the lander for its trip to the moon. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.